Okay, um, and thank you. And, and again, I'm delighted to be asked to contribute to, to the event. Um, as mentioned before, my background is in teaching. I'm a history teacher at Kings Park Secondary School in Glasgow, and I teach all year groups within the secondary setting. And within that, we cover a range of historical topics. Um, the theme and the history and the focus on migration, what it is and the impact of migration, is something that we do explore in first year. Um, I think this picture sums it up. It is in a very kind of soft manner. All right, I'm just going to move. I don't know if the. There we go. All right. Um, by this, I mean it is background. It is something that is not the main area of focus of the learning. And therefore, it's hinted to and referenced through other areas of learning. Um, for example, we examine the impact of settlers to Scotland. And the settlers in first year that they uh, investigate are the Vikings. So after the initial um, excitement of the bloodshed and the carnage and the exciting manners of execution, um, we do focus on relationships. We focus on the relationship building, the use of language in everyday Scots, and the impact and influence of the Vikings on, for example, Scottish place names. Um, being reflective, if, if I'm honest, I cannot say with certainty that people are aware of this actually being an example of migration and the impact and influence of immigrants to Scotland. Um, what I would argue is, I think this is because of the group that we are focusing on. We focus on the Vikings. Um, and I think pupils do not kind of see them as immigrants to Scotland. They see them as warriors and as raiders who came to Scotland. And I think this is an interesting point. There is no distinct nationality to the group of the Vikings. And yes, the students know the, uh, the countries that the Vikings came from, but I think the fact we are not calling the people a name in the sense of them being identifiable as belonging to one country does blur people's understanding. Um, they see them as just the Vikings. And I think for me as a practitioner, that's certainly an area that I and, and we as a, a, a profession can do better in. And there's a real opportunity here to improve the knowledge of our learners in the wider sense. Um, so not just learning about the Vikings, but having an awareness of migration and what it means, what it looked like in the past, and also seeing migration as a historical normality and um, something that has always been. Um, we do focus more heavily, definitely, on migration in the senior phase. And at both National 5 and higher, we cover um, the topics of migration and empire. Um, those two things are taught together. And this is their official title. And the course spans from um, 1830 to 1939. And I've got a wee kind of slide here which shows the, the course specification for National 5. So we have mandatory areas that we cover. Um, and we then have some descriptions about what would best prepare our pupils for tackling their assessments. And as you can see, attempts to cover both the reasons for Scottish migration and the experience of Scots abroad, as well as the reasons for immigrants coming to Scotland and their experience within Scotland. And in terms of immigration, uh, we focus on four groups. We look at the Irish, and that is split into um, Protestant and Catholic. We look at Lithuanians, Jews and Italians. And so that is what we focus on at National 5. At higher, there are quite a few similarities. And once again, it's split into four specific areas. We look at the reasons for Scottish migration, the experience of immigrants to Scotland, and the impact and experience of Scots abroad, and the impact of migration and empire on Scotland. And um, it is clear there is a, a very big overlap in the two courses. And as a department, we try very much to ensure that people who have perhaps studied migration and empire at National 5 level don't then repeat this in higher. And as much as it is a strength to draw on previous knowledge, it's a benefit to pupils. We also run the risk of perhaps um, repeating history in a way that becomes disengaging for learners. And certainly that's something we want to avoid. And I really kind of my um, participation here is kind of my experience and observations as a practitioner. So I've taught for the last 10 years hundreds of, of pupils this topic and there's certainly some things I witness year on year. Um, what I would say is as a teacher personally, I value the inclusion of teaching migration within the curriculum. Um, the topic fulfills numerous aims and I think it provides history which has the potential to actually have a, a personal relationship with the young people learning it. And by that, I mean, there are high numbers of pupils who actually have some kind of family connection to migration, either um, their ancestors who have settled in Scotland or they are migrants to Scotland, 
or they have ancestors who have um, left Scotland and have settled elsewhere. The topic also allows, I would say, for real world reflections as well. So pupils get to see that migration is not just a thing of the past. Um, they can see the legacy and the impact of migration to Scotland over time, whether this be through groups within their own community or the fact that we have different types of food shops and cafes. And importantly, for me as a practitioner, um, the study of how immigrants were treated in the past in Scotland is really valuable. And I think we get to challenge the uh, prejudices that existed in the past. And this is where the link to um, kind of the current context comes in. And we are able to consider attitudes to migration today. And again, try to kind of tackle those misconceptions. What I also see as important in the coverage of the Scots abroad, and um, it's quite interesting when you teach this with the pupils, is that they get to explore both the um, celebrated aspects of the impact of Scots abo abroad, but also the um, negative impact that some Scots had. Um, what I would say is the experience of the learners differs greatly, and I would say depending on whereabouts in Scotland they are actually learning. Uh, for example, teaching within a Glasgow secondary school, I noticed that pupils are very aware of migration. It is something that is current to them. It's something that is around them in their community. Um, and I, again, um, being English, I think this is something that I notice very much as well, having come to Scotland and in particular Glasgow, um, the learners are very aware of Irish immigration to Scotland and the settlement of Irish in Scotland. And it's something that is still quite current and ties very much to um, the, the kind of in the west of Scotland, the, the kind of the relationship with football. And it is um, a, a, an area of debate and question and interest with learners. However, this is where I think there's an opportunity for us within the, the secondary school and, and within education to use that to challenge thinking and challenge misconceptions, which are believed by some learners as, as being truth based upon their social context rather than actual education. Um, and as I said, it, it is very much dependent on where you are and where you are learning about this. Um, I have colleagues who uh, teach this topic and uh, she lives and works in Fife. And the experience of her learners in Fife is quite different from my learners in Glasgow. So uh, my colleague describes the very limited experience of immigration that a number of her students have. Um, so their understanding of what migration is and why people come to Scotland is limited and very much based on perhaps what they see in the media rather than through personal experience. So my colleague tells me that this is actually a really great opportunity to explore the experience of immigrants um, in the past and the attitudes towards what we call all immigrants. So the idea that all immigrants behaved like this, all immigrants, um, you could characterise them because they did that. And what she really enjoys and what she witnesses is the uh, the learners that she has really question that and say, well, they weren't like that. That's not the case, which is excellent because that then gives her that opportunity to apply that same thinking to today and dispel their beliefs about immigration, um, which, as we said before, are not based on reality and personal experience, but based on um, you know something external that they've, they've heard instead. Um, and certainly I would say a consensus among colleagues that I work with and, and, and work with on a wider scale outside my own school community of the importance of teaching the um, activities and experience of Scots abroad. Um, learners appear to have a real sense of pride in what Scots achieved abroad and that's quite interesting to see. Um, you find sometimes um, when pupils write things like we did this and you think oh were you, were you there? Okay. But, you know, it's that sense of connection to, to people in the past. And um, they like the fact that Scots helped develop, you know, the sheep farming industry in New Zealand and Australia, um, the brewing industry, they're very proud of, surprisingly, um, and also the impact on education that Scots had abroad and the fact that there are still um, institutions that resemble the, the model that Scots developed. Um, interestingly, and at the same kind of point, it is quite alien. The Scots at first that um, Scots abroad could do something that was maybe negative um, and, and, and not so celebrated and so for example the you know the fact that Scots um, seized land from indigenous people that was quite reminiscent of some of the, um, the experiences that Highland Scots had within Scotland that forced them to leave that's actually quite an interesting point of learning for the peoples they find that quite surprising 
um, and they are able to see the parallels of, well, Scots moved abroad because of these reasons, and yet in their new countries as immigrants, they kind of carried out some things that we've just seen were, were, were terrible that's happening to them at home, and yet they're kind of reproducing that abroad. And I think that's why it's really important that we have all of this within the curriculum for our learners. Um, at both National 5 and higher, and, and with every subject that we do, we do ask for people feedback on their learning. And if I'm honest, when I first started teaching this topic, um, I'd never studied it myself. And as much as, you know, I found it interesting as a, as a historian, um, I didn't actually appreciate how much the pupils actually enjoyed it. Um, and I, I would say more than just enjoying learning about the past, they were able to understand why they were learning it and also able to kind of see its relevance to the real world context. And what I've got for you here is um, an example of one of my S4 pupils. So, um, you know, other than, than, you know, if we didn't have COVID, um, this pupil, she would be sitting her National 5 exam in, in um, summer. So the comments that she's picked up on here, now, like I'm not going to read it all, but there's a couple of things that I think are quite telling about the experience of the young people. So she's got, I think that the migration topic really made me realise the scale of the British Empire at its height and afterwards, and how Britain's actions may, uh, many years ago continue to impact the world we live in today and define many aspects of society around the globe. And I think this is something that not only this people, but all our pupils notice. And I think definitely for me, when I first uh, started teaching this topic, I think I actually assumed too much. I think this idea of empire and the movement of people and, and cultures was something that I kind of took for granted and thought the peoples would know about it. Um, that's not the case. And that's certainly something that we've explored more through the, the topics that we teach. Um, she's also mentioned about the, the kind of the, the strengths, the, the positives and the negatives she's got about, you know, the Sometimes she's got the uh, unreported atrocities that were carried out on foreign soil, you know, the treatment towards the Maori population and, and Canadian natives. But then she also has that kind of awareness of there, there is a however, there are, there are kind of different elements. And um, the fact that there were, you know, positives to, to being a, a Scots abroad and, and Brits abroad. And that what I think quite interesting is the, the ability to take a step back and, and view what happened, but also kind of not dismiss it, see it in its context, but also be able to apply it to, to today. That idea of um, things that happened in the past, you know, we need to be aware of them, we can't forget them. And we must be aware of and, and you know, talk about the past and the atrocities and, and it defines where we are today. Um, you will not be surprised to know this is a very engaged pupil, all right? This is not my, uh, I can't sadly say it's, it's representative of, of all my pupils, but I think the, the sentiment is actually recognised amongst all peoples. Um, you recognise migration takes place for many reasons, that migration takes place today for many reasons as well. Um, and then they recognise that immigrants to Scotland had different experiences and that the prejudice um, that existed at the time and attitudes towards immigrants in the past uh, were unfounded. And you can see them for the, the reasons why they were there in the context of the time. But again, this is where people have commented on the link with the present and the experience of immigrants in Scotland today. So it allows us to explore um, those kind of attitudes and, and really kind of dispel those, uh, th those attitudes and beliefs. So I suppose really to return to the, uh, the kind of the, the title of the kind of presentation, um, where have we been, where are we going? I think that teaching and learning of migration in Scottish schools has allowed people to explore um, where Scots have been, certainly, and uh, where immigrants to Scotland have settled and their experiences, and equally it allows them to examine um, the experience of Scots and the legacy of Scots abroad. Um, where are we going? Well, I would like to think that we're, we're going in the right direction. Um, we are a, a real world subject with history, and history is a combination of facts and interpretations. And through studying migration with pupils, I hope that we are going in the direction of opening learners' minds, um, not just in terms of learning the history of past events, um, but to open their mind and use that knowledge of past events and apply them to today to understand and question um, reasons for migration and attitudes towards mi migration now. And I think really, um, to, to sum up, history is at its best when we can draw upon it to not only examine the past, but also examine our present and try to find parallels within that. Um, 
that's kind of a, a very short and hopefully informative kind of my perspective and my pupils' perspective on the uh, importance of migration to us in our uh, in our curriculum. So again, I am very happy to take questions at the uh, the Q and A session. Thank you.